What those mouths do, really, if we think about it, is yeah. dissolve me. Honestly, dream. Hello, good morning, Vivi. Good morning, it's too early. It sure is. Welcome to the first, best, and only morning show in existence. I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan. And uh, it's a perfectly normal day here at the Pixel Circus Studios. No, it's Costume Friday! Hey! Hey! Uh, hello, everyone. A happy Costume Friday to you. Uh, Anthony. Yes. You wanna tell them what you are, or do you want them to like, to, to guess? I forgot about Costume Friday. Yeah, Anthony was just dressed like this. I'm sorry. This morning. No, I'm uh, I'm Joker. I'm Ren from uh, Persona Five. Mm -hmm. Look at me. And I'm not killing people. I'm killing boys. That's right. Uh, I'm Jennifer from Jennifer's Body. And good morning, Alex. Good morning. I'm Asterian. Yeah. Kind of. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so good. I love him very much. <laughs> We all uh, do. We all love our problematic boy. I noticed you did not put Dagger in his Halloween costume, his little Robin costume that I bought for him. <sighs> Dagger has many a Halloween costume and he uh, does not enjoy any of them. No, he hates wearing them. He, well, what he minds is he'll wear a costume, uh -huh. but he minds wearing anything uh, on his face or head. Yeah. So I bought him a little Robin costume mm -hmm. uh, and it has like a the eye thing and he mm -hmm. hates that. He hates the mask. Absolutely hates it. Will not wear the mask. He's got a lot of stuff. He's got a very cute dragon costume, but he won't wear the little horns. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got Yoda ears that he won't wear. Damn. Yeah, he's got a lot. He's got a lot that he won't wear. Same. Yeah. Me too. Uh, I am wearing blue colored contact lenses and it makes my field of vision so incredibly small they are technically prescription, mm -hmm. but I do say technically. Right, they're prescription in the way that like, uh, novelty, inexpensive contact lenses can be. Which is exactly what they are. Um, so my vision is limited at this time, which sure. might help for something we're getting into because today we are doing the monster fucker tier list. That's right, that's right. We talked about it on Wednesday and we said, yeah, we we're, we're qualified to do this. So we started with like a, you know, hey, give a top three of classic universal monsters. Those are in here, but we have expanded the list greatly. Mm -hmm. to We've expanded like, the fuckable cinematic universe. Yeah. So we talked about doing all like just horror movie villains, mm -hmm. but that was far too many. Once we got into it, we realized there were too many fuckable monsters to also include regular horror villains. Yeah, so we've got a lot, we've got a very interesting list. We'll, we'll, you'll, you'll see. I, yeah, I, yeah. I feel very good about the list that we came up with. Uh, we're also gonna be talking about, um, gosh, we're gonna be talking about how the, the fact that there's a whole Animal Crossing in the latest Like a Dragon game. Yeah, I'm surprised that you didn't start with uh, talking about Alan Wake. Well, I'm leading up to it because that's the big news. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. is. It is, it is. I'm kidding. Yes. I'm kidding. Not even in jest. I joke, I joke. But I you joke. can't. But I can't? But you can't about you can't Alan joke Wake. about it? No, Alan Wake is serious business. I've been waiting 13 years for this. Lucky 13 for Alan Wake 2, baby. Lucky 13 for Alan Wake 2. I texted you yesterday because I was in a dilemma. I was like, what, what platform? I've been waiting 13 years. What platform do I get this for? Yeah. Watch digital foundry videos. Uh-huh, what'd you decide on? I got, I, I'm getting it on the PC. Okay. I am getting it on the PC. Cause I remember you were going back and forth of like, I wanna play it on my big TV, but I would never move a cable. Yeah, this is like, if I'm gonna play a PC game on my TV, I gotta move a cable? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's wild, like unplug and plug a cable in? I don't know if I'm never, gonna do apparently. that. I don't know, but we talked about this. We talked about like the the comfiest positions to play games in. Yeah. And how like, once a game is on a certain platform, you will only play it under certain circumstances. Oh yeah, 100%. And I really do think of PlayStation as like my TV. Uh-huh. My sitting on my couch, playing a game on so my I big TV. So I think of Xbox for me. Yeah, so I was like, do I get Alan Wake on it? And then I watched all those, I watched all those Pixel Peeper reviews. Yeah. And it's a PC game for sure. Okay, It's a PC right. game for sure. Uh, we're gonna be talking about a couple of uh, fun and very, very cute little indie games. Mm -hmm. We're also gonna be talking about uh, Fall Guys and Final Fantasy XIV crossover. Those are the two little indie games. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, those two. That tiny little indie game, Final Fantasy fourteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got lots of stuff to get into. Yeah. Um. Ooh, Alex just put in some reviews for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. I actually really want to see it. I got invited to a screening, and I wasn't able to go. Damn. Yeah. But uh, I'm very excited for it. I'm very excited to see what this Willy's Wonderland knockoff is like. <laughs> yeah, I heard they couldn't get him for it. Yeah, I heard I heard Nick Cage wouldn't come back for the yeah. Willy's Wonderland too. Yeah. So they renamed it. I'm just very curious because I've played the first Five Nights at Freddy's game, but I've mm-hmm. never gotten into any of the lore, and I just, this could be my entry point. I love the lore. I, I love the lore more than I love the games, for sure. People love the lore. You so gotta we'll, love the lore. We'll talk about that. Uh, um, but also, um, what, Anthony? Also, also, there was a thing that I was gonna talk about. I forgot what it was. <laughs> Oh, we got that new Snake Eater trailer. Oh yeah. We got that new Snake Eater trailer and people are um, not excited <laughs> for the remake of Snake what? Eater. What? I don't know. This is, I think it's, it's not the biggest fumble in Konami's history, certainly. we've mm-hmm. Konami has fumbled so many things. Yeah. Uh, but it feels like a fumble. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm excited to see what everybody thinks of it. You know what else feels like a fumble? I forgot to turn on a bunch of lights. Oh yeah. We normally have more lights. We normally do have more lights. That's okay. Now we got them. We've got two of them. Oh man. We could use one more. One more? We could use one more. I'm gonna get one more. Get one more light up. I have to walk very carefully in this costume. Why? On Twitch. <laughs> Steve, if Steven Twitch sees that the, the entirety of that costume, we're gonna be banned. We're gonna be shadow banned for life. Um, look, BBs. Alan Wake 2 is here. And if you know anything about me, I've been waiting a good long time for this. I'm a huge Alan Wake fan. Huge. I'm a huge Remedy fan. Massive. Uh, I fi- Eight feet tall. Eight feet tall in terms of fandom. <laughs> if I, You remember a couple years ago, I finally met Sam Lake. Yes. Um, and literally just... S- I I don't normally do this, but I just sat talking the guy's ear off for like <laughs> for like ten minutes. Yeah, and he was very polite and very sweet about it. And yeah. like, because we've we've talked a little bit over the internet through the years, mm-hmm. um, so he knew me when I came up. But like, yeah. I was definitely taking up a little too much of Sam Lake's time at the VGAs. The only people <laughs> that you fanboy over are Sam Lake and Kei Hoi Kwan. Oh my god, <laughs> those are the two. Those are the two, and I'll tell you what, I've waited for Alan Wake and the review roundups have told me that it was absolutely worth the wait. Uh-huh. Uh, every single review for Alan Wake 2 has been insanely positive. Um, so it came out at 11 p.m. last night? Yeah, 11 p.m. Central, so I think it was 10 p.m. for us, or 11 p.m. Mountain, I don't know, it was one of We're those all, la- it's- yeah, we're always earlier than everybody else. Yeah, so it was 11 p.m., I want to say mountain time or-, or who, cent- knows what, who knows mountain time? Or central time? I don't know. But somebody told me like what time it was coming out, mountain time. So maybe, yeah. Because they live in mountain time. Oh. So if it came out like 11 p.m. mountain time, then it was 10 p.m. for us. Sure. But anyway, sure, it was sure. it was a later evening. It wasn't one uh-huh. of those like 6 p.m. or whatever. Uh, so I have not played it yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, and the you couldn't preload the PC version- That is devastating. Because the Epic Game Store, hey, Epic Game Store, I know people say this to you all the time. Are you gonna get your shit together? Oh. Like Epic Game Store, are you gonna, like, have you thought about getting your shit together? (laughs) Has anybody, am I the only person that thinks this? No. No. Everybody says it. Yeah. The Epic Game Store really needs to get their shit together. Uh, So no, I have to, I have to start downloading it. Yeah. So I can stream it all day today. Is that what you're gonna do after this? Oh God, yeah. You be streaming it all day? That's all I'm gonna do is play Alan Wake. I mean, it's all I'm gonna do all weekend, but yeah, I'll do the first few hours for sure. Then the rest, of, the rest of it's for me. Okay, yeah, that's fair. You know what I mean? That's good balance. The rest of it's for me. Just, I did the same thing with Spider-Man. Yeah. Get a little bit of Spider-Man on the stream. Because I think the other thing is with a big, with a big game like this, uh-huh. I think most people want to play it for themselves. I don't want to spoil it for people. You know, I don't stream a lot of the big games. It doesn't, like, I don't know. I, I just, it doesn't interest me most of the time streaming yeah. the big games. Alan Wake is in that category where it's like, well. Well. It's not like you're, oh, everybody's playing God of War. You know what I mean? Alan Wake right. is a little more niche than that, I would say. Yeah. 
Um, but I feel really bad when I start a game on stream and I almost never finish it by myself. It's very rare for me to finish a game by myself. Really? That I started on stream because I feel bad. Not me. If I play a game, <laughs> if I play a game and I start really, really liking it, I never stream it again. That's so funny. I never stream it again. I'm like, that's for me. That's for me. I love that for you. I'm taking these off. I'm going to slowly take a piece of this off every 10 minutes. How many pieces are there? Whoa. Well, let's find out together. We should get to the news. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about these Alan Wake reviews. Yeah. Uh, so here's the review roundup. Um, GameSpot, 10 out of 10. Wow. Saying the mere existence of Alan Wake 2 would have at different points over the years felt like a minor miracle, but for it to be this one feels singular in its achievements. Wow. This is all one sentence. This is a very run on sentence. Mark, Mark Delaney, I love you and I love your love for Alan Wake, but that's a lot of commas. There's a lot of commas in that sentence. Yeah, well, how do you feel about the Game Rant review? There are a lot of clauses. Now, Game Rant gave it a 2.5 out of five. Which is a big standout from this list. Yeah, uh, saying even if the game's rather frustrating technical problems didn't exist, Alan Wake 2 would still be a disappointment because of its shortcomings in those departments. I see this review and I see it in contrast to all the other reviews and it makes me think like, was your PC just fucking up or something? Well, this is the <laughs> big thing. There has been, the, the team at Remedy, Mm -hmm. has not done great in, uh, mm -hmm. apparently, in making Alan Wake palatable on certain systems. Uh, certain AMD card owners yeah. were just like, oh, but my card's not that old and it's not gonna do, it's not gonna do Alan Wake. Which is like valid in your frustration, but should be mentioned in your review. Yeah, well, I don't know if that's what the, what the context of this review is, but I'm guessing. I don't I'm know, guessing. considering again, we've got 10 out of 10, nine out of 10, five out of five, five mm -hmm. out of five, five out of five, 2.5 out of five. I'm yeah. just like, it does seem like it's you. <laughs> it does seem like maybe, yeah, like check your system or upgrade your PC. Yeah. Or play it on a console. If no one Do else something. is mentioning these in the reviews. Yeah, uh, IGN nine out of 10 saying, uh, it's a superb horror, survival horror sequel that makes the cult classic original seem like little more than a rough draft by comparison. What I love about Alan Wake reviews. Yeah or games like this when they come out, is it makes every single games writer go, ooh, ooh, I get to use all my metaphors and my analogies. I get to say that it was a rough draft because it's a game about a writer. Uh, games Hub with a five out of five said, Alan Wake 2 almost feels mad in its approach with an overwhelming array of threads in the table that threatens to collapse under pressure at any moment, yet with clear and incisive logic, Matched with devotion to delightful absurdity, the team at Remedy has managed to craft a breathtaking story. One that plays out in a clever, fascinating, and horrifying way. I love it. I love it. I mean, this is this is the thing. It's even if you if you see Remedy as a story-based studio, you're happy. Yeah. If you see Remedy as a technology-based studio, you're happy. And it's very, very rare that people think the same of both, you know? Yeah. And particularly when 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 they do things in such an original way. Uh, VGC says, massively confident, groundbreaking, full of surprises. It's Remedy at its very best. The shooting isn't stellar, but they don't want, I, I think they don't want this to be a shooting game. Yeah. The first one was a lot of shooting and everybody was like, even in 2010, we were all like, mm, okay, a little heavy. it's not bad. It's not bad, but it's not great. Yeah. Uh, this one I, I've heard from a lot of people that they're leaning way more into straight up survival horror, yeah. story based, puzzle based, a right. lot of that, which I think is just a much better fit for Alan Wake. Yeah. Even though I thought the the combat and control was really good, like mm -hmm. I think I think the shooting was really good. Uh, Guardian says uh, four out of five with two protagonists exploring different worlds. The thriller is a thoroughly entertaining blend of detective procedural and narrative weirdness. Very cool. Yeah. And then Games Radar, five out of five, saying the pacing won't be for everyone with narration and exploration weighed equally against action and story. But if you're willing to embrace the weird rhythms and idiosyncratic tendencies, you'll find Alan Wake 2 is an adventure unlike any other. Yeah. And that's what I want. Like, Control was great. And I loved, I loved the weird stuff and the story stuff just as much. It's very rare where I, that I'm like, no, tell me more of the story in an action game like this, yeah. you know? I'm always team tell me the story and mm -hmm. I don't care as much about the action. Yeah. Well, I guess, yes. I guess what I mean is like, 
in a triple A game, normally when they're telling me their story, I'm like, cool, 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 cool. Cool, 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 cool. Interesting. You know, even uh even in things like a like a God of War, like yeah. I'll get to a point where I'm like, okay. Interesting. Okay, I know enough. All right. I know, and I think it has a lot to do with um I think it just has a lot to do with how well people handle story. Yeah. And how story is handled in big triple A games. Right. Um, like I hate when a Ubisoft game is talking to me. Sure. But I also hate when I'm playing a Ubisoft yeah. game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's something. You know there. what I mean? There's a lot going on, but uh, Alan White, like Remedy stuff, I've always just loved both equally. Yeah. Like, I just love when I can stop in front of a TV screen in a Remedy game and watch a weird puppet show. Yeah, it's great. Like, it's dope as hell. That's awesome. I'm so, so excited. We're going to lose Anthony for another weekend. It uh -huh. is unfortunate that it's Halloween weekend, so no, Anthony will not be attending anything in no. his planning. Uh-uh. That's okay, though. Alan Wake is scary game for scary season. So I'm doing it. I'm celebrating. Sure. Not with your friends, but- No. With my family, <laughs> Remedy Games. <laughs> <laughs> every time I close my eyes, these colored contacts wiggle a little, and it takes a minute to like. And every time we kiss, I swear we could fly. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> all right, we're gonna get through all this news so we can get to the monster fucker tier list, all right? Yeah. Um, let's keep talking about games, yeah. shall we? You wanna uh, talk about this one? We were just talking about Ubisoft. We so. were, let's continue this. I'm gonna tell you something shocking. You're okay. not gonna believe. It's, listen, here comes a jump scare. It's jump scare for the season. Ubisoft. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Skull and Bones, the Ubisoft pirate game uh, that is supposed to Give Sea of Thieves a run for its money. Yeah, yeah, Realistic yeah. Mm -hmm. pirate simulation mm, game. Yeah. Yeah, science-based dragon game. 100% science-based pirates. Yeah, 100% science-based pirate game. Shockingly, has been delayed again. What? Uh, can you believe it? No. It has now been delayed to early 2024, supposedly. Hey, this game's been in development since 2015. Yeah, dog. This... Hey, what do you, you could, you could, you could not. Yeah. Like at this point, you could just not, they canceled, they canceled 30 games that we'd never even heard about. You remember yeah. this earlier this year, Ubisoft canceled like something, 30 something internal secret games that none of us had heard about yet. Yeah. It's been 10 minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> that none of us had heard about yet. And one of them was not Skull and Bones. Sure wasn't. So it's interesting because we didn't really have a release date right now because uh, mm -hmm. we had already passed the last one and they just hadn't updated it actually. Yeah. So this is the first update we've gotten since September of last year when it was supposed to be coming out November 8th mm -hmm. and then it was pushed to March 9th of this year, which right. as you're aware has passed. Um, and Damn. they just didn't acknowledge it. March 9th is gone already. Yeah, right? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like six more months go by. Wow. And we're like, oh yeah, we should probably tell you that game will come out at some point. Uh, uh, push it to, to like Q1 of next year. <sighs> Look. So they said sometime early in Ubisoft's fiscal year, which means between January 1st and March 31st, supposedly. It's, you don't have to put it out. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. It's okay. I don't think we even, I don't think many people even care at this point. Yeah. I think, I think people have done their pirate game when it comes to, you know, when it comes to pirate games. Yeah. Everybody kind of got their fill. You know, we don't need a competitive, pi another pirate game, I don't think. I don't know. I'm always excited for pirate games. I'm not always excited for Ubisoft games. Yeah. Um, but what's very interesting about this too, is that like, they've done all of the things for a game that's coming out very soon. So it's like, it seemed like the game was done in that we got beta tests, yeah. we got the ESRB rating, mm -hmm. system requirements, and a full gameplay reveal. Right. Which would make it seem like the game is done. So whatever happened after that, maybe it was in the beta testing, maybe it was in the gameplay reveal and the response to it, they clearly went back in and did something to this game. Yeah. There has so, to be a reason they're like shelving it. I think that there was, there was some sort of major internal problem that yeah. they were marketing around. Uh -huh. They were not showing us. That they thought they could fix in time. Mm -hmm. That they thought, oh, this'll be done. Don't worry, we can do this. We can do this in another four months. And it turned out, oh no, 
it we pulled yeah. a thread and the entire thing fell apart. Yeah. That's what I'm guessing. Because you're right. To so do all that stuff and then be like, uh, just a little more time. And then wait another year? That's wild. Also, get, like, like a other, whole year. The other thing about a Ubisoft gameplay reveal is, ah, do I trust it? No. A Ubisoft gameplay reveal is like, okay, the, you're, you're giving me a little bit of that vertical slice. Yeah. You're giving me a little bit of that thing on the bottom of the screen that says in engine. Yeah. You know? Rich Baddock Games brings up an interesting point, said, I think they do have to put it out. They took money from the Singaporean government to fund the development and are contractually obligated to release this game. Oh. That's probably why it didn't make the cut list, but they don't want to release it. They're doing minimum viable deliverables. Yeah. They're doing minimum viable deliverables to yeah. run out this contract. Yeah, dog. Oh, that's fascinating. That's so Ubisoft. I want to know what the contract is and if they actually have to put this game out. That's I'm sorry? I'm sorry? Yeah. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know. The only game I want to see from Ubisoft is Beyond Good and Evil Two, and I know that's been, I know that's been cursed to another dimension. I have to agree with the chat when they say we do need a good full pirate RPG. It's true. I it, would love. I love pirates. Mm -hmm. So like, I would love. I there's not too many pirate games for me. I've not yeah. had my fill of pirate games. I totally disagree on that. I will take every pirate game. Love to pirate. Mm -hmm. um, I love these kinds of things. I love as somebody who's afraid of the ocean to be on a boat out on the ocean. Don't like to be in the ocean in games. Yeah. I don't like to subnautica, but you ever love play, to sail. You ever play those Pirates of the Caribbean games for the PS2? Yeah. Those are some bad games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I will take every pirate game, but A, Ubisoft, B, I don't know what they're gonna do with that game, but I would love a really good pirate RPG. Yeah, I th you know, this this whole thing came out of uh, the the Assassin's Creed 4 thing, which then turned into Black Flag. Yeah. And they were like, we're really gonna capitalize on this, spin this out into the next thing yeah. that we're gonna do. Because they did, when those Assassin's Creed games came out, I remember we all looked at the boat stuff and we were like, God damn, I'll play a whole game of this boat stuff. Yeah, Assassin's Creed Black Flag was the mm -hmm. only Assassin's Creed I've ever enjoyed. Yeah. Um, it's the only one that I've ever been like, oh, oh I want to play this. I like this. Yeah, I haven't played one since. Tell me more about their creed. <laughs> Mind you. Yeah. Um, so there, I haven't really given myself a chance to like any of them since, because not generally the games I reach for, yeah. but I did like it. <laughs> well, listen, same, same. Some of them don't have boats. Yeah. And they, and that's a problem. God, this is so funny. Um, I want to play Black Flag again. Not a total pirate RPG, but close enough for now. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I also am laughing at the tension saying, Sage, solidly pro-pirate. I'm shocked. Yeah, who would have thought? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? I found an article from 2021 mm -hmm. that Let's says go. Ubisoft is still making Skull and Bone because a deal with the Singapore government won't let it die. Nobody knew what the fuck they were doing, said an ex-developer. Ooh, and that was that was two years ago. Does it go into any details of the deal? Probably not. A little bit. Yeah, what do, we, what do we got? Alex, we go to your cam for this? Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Let's tell us about it, and I'll be right back. Okay. Um, uh, Kotaku reports that the game apparently cost Ubisoft upwards of $120 million. A deal with the government of Singapore provided generous subsidies, including hiring people at the Ubisoft Singapore studio mm -hmm. and the studio releasing original IPs over the next few years. But apparently, according to some of their uh, current and former developers, it lacked any form of stability. Yeah. Managers were constantly brought on to like redesign it and then be replaced by a new manager. Oh, you be, it, we know that Ubisoft is trash on the yeah. inside. Super, super trash. I just want, I just want to know what's going on with that deal and what the terms yeah. of it are. Like, I know that they have the studio in Singapore. I know, like you're saying, they had to they had to be getting tax breaks from that. They had to be getting subsidies from that. Like you're saying, they got to hire people. Yeah. Um, but what, what are the terms? Holding on like, to what it. I want to know, and I'm sure this stuff isn't public. This yeah. is just why I'm saying I'm curious about it. I want to know how many games the Singapore studio has to put out. I want to know how much money the Singapore studio has to put out. I want to know why they can't just say, oopsie, and like release a different game instead. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. And have the Singapore studio just release that game and be like, this is the game that you invested in now. 
Hard to and say. use that as a make good. But I think the main thing we know is that they have to release a completed game. Like according to the agreement. Well, Ubisoft's never done that. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be completed. That's not, what does that even mean? It's an unfulfillable deal. Yeah, Ubisoft is like, we can't do it. We've never done it. We won't do it. Ubisoft keeps climbing to the top of the towers in their office and they're like, we can only see so far. <laughs> <laughs> And what do you expect us to do? Yeah. Just, like, we can't finish a game? That's, that's ridiculous. That's wild. Now, we can't finish a game, but we can release DLC for it. Yes, before it's finished. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Hey, speaking of DLC, let's talk about this Final Fantasy XIV and Fall Guys crossover, because when I saw the headline, I went, oh, that's cute. We've seen a lot of Fall Guys events yeah. where they do like, you get a little costume from a game. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you'll get a little chocobo suit or yeah. something. How cute is a that little cloud, be? A little cloud strife. Oh, uh, it's not in the direction you would think, Anthony. It's Fall Guys coming to Final Fantasy 14, not Final Fantasy 14 coming to Fall Guys. Okay, now you've got my attention. So look at these, pull up this thing, open the thing, look at the images of a small friend running around in a Fall Guys outfit. Well, wild. well, I love it. Absolutely wild. So, whoa, look at the athleisure I wear know. for your Final Fantasy 14 character. It's so funny to me because it's just like, why on earth would you do that? I love it. Thank you. That's, I love it and it makes no sense. That's the best. That's it's legitimately so the best. Funny. Um, yeah, it sounds like the rewards are pretty, uh, are, there are a lot of awards. You'll be able to get a mount. And a moat, minions, housing items, farmers' kits, and dyes. Yeah, it's wild. Uh, so depending on um <laughs> how much a full set of gentle bean swag. Uh huh. Gentle bean swag. Whether you go for a crown or the horrible, no good, terrible, dead fall guy hat. Okay. Will run you one thousand six hundred and forty MGF. Okay. Vanderville gold saucer frames. That doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, it's, I don't know what that means. Is that a lot of gold saucer frames? Um. Is that a, I don't know. It's not bananas. It's uh, not like unfathomable. Huh. It's like a pretty standard like, oh, event costume kind of thing. Okay. Like I feel like that's pretty normal. Any other Final Fantasy 14 players? That sounds reasonable to me. Okay. Uh, I do love... I do love that there's like a uh, a flat dead Fall Guys hat. Yeah. Like that's very good. I just am so confused by why this is happening. Oh and my I say this with so God. much love in my heart. Like I'm enjoying it so much. Look at this on the official release site. They show, uh, I've got it up on my screen here. They have uh, an event at the Gold Saucer that's literally just a level from Fall yeah, Guys. Anthony, you have to play Final Fantasy 14. There's so many fun worlds in it. Like it's I just, not. I just look at. I'm sorry, enhance. Yeah. I'm sorry, enhance. Anthony, I'm telling you, you have to. Play I'm sorry, this game. enhance. I'm not telling you to play it because I want you to play it. I'm telling you to play it because we are going to have so much fun in it together, and I know that we are. I know you so well, Anthony. But I'm looking at this, and it feels like we could just play Fall Guys. But there's so much more to the game. Ugh. Can you be one of those little mans in Fall Guys? I don't think so. Probably not. No. Wow, event items. Oh my <laughs> gosh, you can get little, look at the little Fall Guys stuff that you can get for your home. Yeah, it's so cute. I that, love it. That's pretty good. I love everything about it. I think this is such a great crossover. I keep going, why would they do this? But like, slash pause, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Why would they do it? I love it. I'm so glad that they did it. I cannot imagine what the motivation for this is, and I love it. It's so funny because like Fall Guys is not a super huge game anymore. No. It's such a like unnatural crossover of properties. I love it. Uh, it sounds, I'm obsessed with it. It looks like you're gonna be able to play this uh, from Halloween to December 31st. So uh, from Halloween to the end of the year. And um, once it's live, you'll need to trek to Ulda and pick up the quest, It Could Happen to You. Amazing. I'm scrolling through, you can see all of the items and how much they cost. Find that there. find that flatty boy hat, um, that flatty hattie. Okay, there's the gentle bean knit cap. Find the deadman, um, deadman hat, no? It's not listed on here. Hmm. I see pink bean, I see penguin. 
I see all the crowns and then just gentle bean stuff. Huh. All right. I don't know what they're referencing there. I found a little emote as well. They've oh, got a Fall Guys emote. Let's see the emote. I'm going to play it. Oh my God. Oh my God. What's it do? Ah! It's cute. I love it. <laughs> it's like the thing that all the beans do at the end when you win. Yeah. I love that. You know, I never got a crown in Fall Guys. I didn't play long enough. I, the rising water level. Yeah. Never once got first place in it. Same. Never once. Did you ever get a crown in general? Cause the maps like change out. Yeah, I think I got, I got like one, but no. No, I yeah, never got a I crown. I did, I got like a crown, but I don't know how, I don't know how or why. Every time I see Fall Guys, there's something about that game. It really makes me want to play Fall Guys though. It's so, it, it looks so good. The design is so pleasing. Yeah. The physics look so fun. Like there's just something, and I think it also speaks to the Nickelodeon game show child. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? Double dare. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. it just looks like I could run that. Yeah, like I'm climbing the aggro crag. Yeah, or like a Takeshi's castle. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. something like that. Legends of the Hidden Temple. Legends of the Hidden Temple, which I'm a champion of, so. I got my real crown, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't need a Fall Guys crown. Did you crown. get anything? I don't remember. I did. What'd you get? Uh, I got a remote control truck, a point and shoot 35 millimeter film camera, and a trip to a dude ranch in upstate New York. Really? Yeah, I did not go on the trip. Why not? Did not sound interesting to me. <laughs> you won a trip and just didn't go? Did not sound interesting to me. Uh, asked for the monetary value instead. Oh, well, if you get the money, okay. Yeah. 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 That's so funny. I don't think I ever knew that. We've talked about you being on Legends of the Hidden Temple and I realized I don't think I ever knew what you won. Yeah. Won every round, swept. <laughs> Not to brag, but I am the ultimate champion. Did you know this? Are you, okay, wait. I am, I am the perfect athlete. I am a, a warrior. Yeah. This is the Alex check. Alex, have you seen Legends of the Hidden Temple? No. <laughs> no. No, of course. No, I have not. not. I watched, I watched it when I was a kid. Yeah. There's a difference of a couple years that- Uh-huh, that it's apparently means, very crucial. That means everything in children's entertainment. That's fair. In children, it means everything. Uh, well, what uh, Valen says, it wasn't fair, Anthony. You were 25 when you competed. Uh, there's nothing in the rules <laughs> that says a grown adult man can't compete on a Nickelodeon show. There might be. Oh, they can say they want to cast children. Yeah. But then when you threaten them with a lawsuit, uh -huh. they have to let For you age on. age discrimination? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm All sorry. Right. Is there a reason that I can't compete with these children? So many. Are there? <laughs> There's so many reasons. I don't know. I don't think All right, so. Continuing DLC news. Um, bah, 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 bah. this accidentally opened. Okay, there we go. Um, Arkham Knight. Yeah. Arkham Knight. Uh, had a little drop and then a little. Oopsie! Just kidding. No drop. It, listen. This are week. you excited? Are you? Are you still playing Arkham Knight? <laughs> I'm. People are. Yeah. I'm sure people are. Yeah. People are still playing Arkham Knight. People are still checking into it. People love that game. Yeah. I mean, that it helps that it took them three years to get the game fixed. Right. When it came out, it gave it a bit more of a long tail than you'd expect. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but- uh, I like Arkham Knight. I think that there, there was a costume that was released for Arkham Knight uh, this week. For just a moment. A fleeting moment that made there was people a costume. Very excited. All of a sudden, the other night, people started losing their minds and posting, oh my God, Robert Pattinson's costume from The Batman is in Arkham Knight. Now, mind you, Batman Arkham Knights came out in 2015. This is not to be confused for like Gotham Knights no. or anything of the sort that's a little more modern. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very interesting to even see them updating it in any way. Um, but for a moment, Epic Games gave you the Batman skin. The, the bat, the Battison, if the, you will. Battinson? The, the Battinson, the Batman. Uh, and the Batman looks good. It yeah. certainly looks like the Batman is in Arkham Knight when you look at those clips. People yeah. were losing their minds. Uh, people were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe the silent drop. This is amazing. Yeah. Thank you, WB. Uh, and then they took all of that back <laughs> when Epic Games took the skin back. Yeah, it turns out Epic Games was not supposed to release that, probably. 
Yeah, we have no actual confirmation or response on what happened here. Uh, the assumption is it was probably not supposed to be released yet, whether it was going to be um, either something they were just testing and never going to release or something that is probably coming up for a specific date. Yeah, the Switch isn't, there's a Switch version, I think, coming out on December 1st. Oh, that makes so much sense. Uh, I yeah, actually, I bet it was supposed to release with that. Um, so there was probably they were probably going to do like a, a nice little update for everybody for that. Yeah, we also have killed supposedly Suicide Squad killed the Justice League coming February second. <laughs> um, the next game in the Arkham series, which makes me think you don't think so. <gasps> There's no way you don't think so. February, <gasps> I four months away. No, I listen. If it does, I'm happy. And, and I'm excited. I want to play that game so bad. But when they released the clip of that game and everybody went, you're doing another game as a service. And they were like, we're not doing a game as a service. And then the gameplay clip came out and everybody was like, you are. It's a game as a service. Uh -huh. Everybody plays the exact same way. Yeah. What are you doing? This is a constantly persistent online. This is not what you said it was going to yeah. be. Uh, I think they have to greatly retool that game. Right. Uh, and I think it's going to take them much longer than that. Mm -hmm. or they don't retool that game right? and they take their lumps for making that game what it is. And I don't think they want to do that after Gotham Knights. Um, I was really looking forward to that. I still am. I'm still really looking forward to that game. I know games as a service is like upsetting and it sucks. And I totally agree with you, but I'm also like, it didn't kill my excitement for that game. I'm still in for it personally. Yeah. I know, I know. Uh, listen, I'm still really in for it, so I'm still very hopeful for it in February. Uh, it's been a while since they released that gameplay footage. That would have been like over the summer. Mm -hmm. It's been a while. It's been mean, a while. been a while. But I mean, we're talking about turning a, a completely persistent game as a service mm -hmm. into with like the battle passes and the grinding and all the stuff people hated from Gotham Knights. Yeah. So integral to not just the game, but probably the way they were planning on monetizing the game. Hypothetically, yeah, because uh, we're going off of, you know, sus like mostly suspicion. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, suspicion and also like that large chunk of gameplay that we saw. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, listen, if it comes out in February, I'm stoked. Yeah. I'm gonna play, like you, like you said, I'm gonna try it no matter what. I wanna, I just wanna be my good, my good boy, Captain Boomerang. Yeah. You know? All next said, I'm still reeling that Arkham Knight was 2015. What even is time? I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. Arkham Knights, Arkham Asylum. Arkham Asylum was great. God, that's such a great game. I was like, what? That was 2009? 2008? I don't know. It was early. Yeah. It was early. I love the Arkham games. I'm a big fan. Uh, I feel like the Arkham games are incredibly divisive. You either love them or you hate them, especially mm -hmm. because of the combat. Like the way the combat is done, you either have to love it or absolutely despise it. Yeah. And there is nobody that is like neutral on Arkham combat. But at the same time, that Arkham combat made its way into literally every character action game. Yep. So if you don't like Arkham, chances are you're not liking like a lot of action games yeah, these days. They use a lot of those mechanics for things. Yeah, that um, free flow combat system is everywhere. Incredibly influential. I love those games. I'm very excited. So my other thought was thinking that it could be getting released with um Kill the Suicide Squad in February could have been what that oh. Madison skin was for. Interesting. Yeah. Because that is the next one in the Arkham series. I don't know. That's okay. true. That's could true. Be. But if they're doing that port in December, that would make total sense. Yeah, because I, I would imagine for Suicide Squad, you'd want to do they already have the they already have the Affleck costume. Mm hmm Hmm. Yeah. Because you'd, like, you'd want one that's you'd want something that's like more dialed into the Suicide Squad game, maybe. But Ben, ben Affleck's costume is not. You said Affleck. Affleck well, because he's the DC, the the DC Cinematic Universe. He was in the first Suicide yeah, Squad. Yeah, I guess the Suicide Squad is so removed from that yeah. in a weird way. I don't know. Or maybe, or whatever. Who knows what anything is anymore? Yeah, maybe whatever the Batman costume is going to be in the Kill the Justice League. Yeah, that would be a good release. Yeah, that would be a really good release. Um, but who knows? Who knows what it's for? We can only speculate because they took it from us. Uh, there's one other thing when we're talking about like games as a service and things of the sort. There was a big piece of news that I actually forgot to put in here. Oh mm. no, everything on my browser just closed for oh. no reason. Oh geez. Um, so I'm just gonna talk about it until I can pull it back up. Oh golly. Uh, Disney Dreamlight Valley, uh, as most of us know, was intended to be um, a game that in beta was like, what is it? A $30 game, a $20 game? It's like not an expensive game. Yeah. Um, and then was supposed to go to free to play um, with like, you know, your battle pass style, your yeah. subscriptions. That was the idea. That was the idea. So they have posted an update that some people are very displeased with. 
Uh, they're going to be doing a formal showcase to expand upon it on November 1st, but they have said that Disney Dreamlight Valley will no longer be going free to play. Oh. They say early access has been incredibly valuable for the entire Disney Dreamlight Valley, Valley team. Thank you for your enthusiasm and participation over the past year. Uh, we have had the chance to build the game that we aspired to while implementing your feedback to make the Valley experience even more magical. Reflecting on the journey we've been with on all of you, we're excited to share that uh, on December 5th, Disney Dreamlight Valley will be leaving early access. Great. Okay, good timing. Um, as we look ahead to the official launch, with the learnings we have gained from early access, we've made the decision to remain a paid game for the foreseeable future. Yeah, when they say that early access has been valuable to the team, they mean $30 a pop valuable to the team. Yeah, somebody updated this because it says with the learnings we've gained from early access and somebody just said, oh, fixed a typo and crossed out the L. With the earnings <laughs> we've gained. <laughs> from early access, which is very funny. Um, this uh, choice ensures that Disney Dreamlight Valley will be able to continue delivering on a premium game experience for all players. It's important that we maintain our promise to keep delivering free content updates. It adds new characters, realms, clothing, furniture, and more surprises. So people ain't, people ain't buying the, uh, we, one of the first things that we said about Dreamlight Valley is, uh -huh. I'm shocked they're not nickel and diming me more. So that's, one of the, the that's one of the first things we said when we played it. We were like, I can't, I'm surprised they're not trying to like push me to buy more things. Me and everyone I know, has bought those gems. Yeah. Everyone I know who plays, been buying those gems. Yeah. Um, to get fun, special eventized stuff. But they also do have pretty reasonable paths to not pay real money. Mm -hmm. Like I usually do it because I don't get enough time to play games. But if I had a little more free time, it would be completely reasonable to get the stuff on the star path sure. that are like the limited events within the time frame of the limited event. It's actually right. pretty reasonable right yeah. now. Yeah, and that's and that to me when when a lot a huge chunk of your players yeah. are going to be kids, are going to be families, are right. going to be like people who are sitting down for game time together, the idea that there's this free Disney game. Yeah. Or, or this this Disney game that, you know, doesn't make you pay yeah. every 10 minutes. I mean, especially imagine you're a parent right now uh -huh. and your kid mostly plays mobile games on on iPad, iPhone, whatever. Right. Mobile games are entirely, hey mom, can I have five more dollars for this game? Yeah. So the idea that this game was so chill about that must have been wonderful for a lot of those people. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately it looks like to stay that chill, you gotta just buy the game. Now here's the thing. There's a very, very like divided response to this. There's some people that are like, yes, absolutely, I'd rather pay for the game once. Mm -hmm. And it gives me confidence that they're going to nickel and dime me less as things come out, because we know that we were all worried that once it went free to play, everything, it would get harder and harder to get and it would be pushing you to spend real money on it. So I am always team, I'd love to pay $30 one time mm -hmm. and not feel the need to pay for subscription models and things like that. So if it continues, in the way that the system is right now, I am so fine with it. I paid for it, even knowing that eventually it was gonna go free to play. Yeah. I paid for it when it came out because I was like, it's worth it for me. It's a fucking great game. I am a, a huge Disney Dreamlight Valley yeah. sim. If, I think if you it's like an a, excellent game. If you like a, a, a farming and town management sim, I think it's I think it's up there with any of the other ones. I think it's one of the best. I think they heavily researched the genre and they really did a great job in it. The mechanics are so intuitive. It's so easy yeah. to just like pop back into after you've been gone for a while. I think this has gotta be disappointing to people, I would imagine for two major reasons. Uh -huh. People who had not gotten the game yet because they were, they were waiting, waiting for it to, to yeah. be free to play. That's gotta be disappointing for you. Uh -huh. And then people who had been grinding out stuff yeah, because they thought once it went free to play, it's gonna be harder to get stuff. Yeah. So they were really putting a lot of time in. Yeah. I feel like either way you're kind of like, hmm, this is not the way I expected this to go. Yeah, very interesting. I don't Gone know. Gone are the days I guess where you can't, where you, where you can't have like a $30 game that doesn't micropayment you. Yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, like this does and doesn't. Yeah. And nothing is required for it. It feels balanced. I hope that it stays that way. They say that this is the way that they will be able to continue to do so. They say that they will continue to release free DLC for it. Um, I'm excited to see the full, we'll talk about it after they do the November 1st, like full thing, because we're also waiting to hear about multiplayer mm -hmm. because that was one of the next steps. They released that big, long, like track of the plans for Dreamlight Valley. And it makes sense that they wouldn't do it until it's out of early access, but like, Multiplayer would change the fucking game. Yeah. I would 
kill for multiplayer oh, in this game. A couple friends just Disney dreamlighting around together. Uh, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, one of the big questions, I guess, for me, as somebody who did not pay $30 for this game, yeah. uh, I just played it on Game Pass. Oh yeah, it's on Game Pass. Now, when they leave early access, I don't know are they gonna leave, gonna leave game, pass. game Pass? I'm very curious, and I hope not, because I, that's right, I am also playing it on Game Pass. If I didn't not, pay I for that didn't game. I pay for it. I thought that I did because I was playing it early, but you're right, it's on Game Pass. I did not pay for that game. I, You know what, I've never had a game that I, like an ongoing game that I was playing leave Game Pass, so I actually don't know what happens. Um, the games the games die and they live in a void. Do they go to a farm upstate? Yeah, yeah, they're um, gonna be No, fine. but I am curious, like a game that's an ongoing game like that. Like I've had a lot of games that I've played that leave Game Pass that are just like, oh, I played a little RPG and I was done with it or whatever. Uh, I, opened, I opened one up that, I was like, oh, I should finish that. Yeah. And it wasn't on Game Pass anymore. And it was just like, you don't actually own this. Do you want to buy it? Okay. And yeah. That's I guess all I'm says. curious because, yeah, I'm just hoping it, it would be. It doesn't kill your there's save no data. There's no way. It there's doesn't no kill your way. save data. Yeah. It's just like, hey, because this happens with PS Plus games and stuff like that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's just like, hey, you don't actually own this. If you want to finish it, you're going to have to buy it. But your yeah. save data is still there. Okay. So then I would just have to buy it probably through the Microsoft store and continue playing it yeah. like that on the like Xbox app. Because I play it primarily on PC yeah. through Game Pass. You, uh, listen, if it goes away though, you want to know what the next big uh, town management sim is? I do. I it's hard. Ishin, like a dragon, infinite wealth. Oh. That's right. It? The latest Yakuza game. Is the, is the hottest new farming sim? It's the hottest new farming sim like a dragon, infinite wealth, has its own island full of villagers. You're building houses. They put a whole ding dang Animal Crossing into infinite wealth. The creatures are so strange. Allow me to show you this, this trailer. It's so good. You ride a dragon, or you ride a, uh, a dolphin uh -huh. to a magical island. Oh my God, you're using a baseball bat to like mine. That's so funny. That's right. That's right. Fishing. It's yeah, got crafting. it all. Crafting. It's got it all. Decorating a house. That's so funny. It's amazing. There are animals, there are villagers. You can choose villagers to move into your town. You have to build them houses to make them happy. You build your house. You can catch bugs with nets. You can fish. Wow. It's entirely an Animal Crossing set in the Like a Dragon world but it's got very much like a dragon aesthetics to it. Like basically you are, the whole the whole thing with infinite wealth uh -huh. is the character from uh, Ichiban from like a dragon, Ishin, uh, washes up on the shore of Hawaii. Okay. And has to start all over again. Okay. And so this is a little, a little island off, off of the main islands of Hawaii that you find that's just a trash island where people throw garbage. Incredible. And so like when you're clearing up the island, you're basically taking a baseball bat to garbage wow. and rocks to like find materials. You can build a mansion. It's all there, baby. Bananas. Uh, and then of course, because it's a, like a dragon game, uh, thugs invade your island and want to steal everything. So you also just have to beat people up. That sounds great, honestly. I can't wait to play. The stuff that they put into the Yakuza games is wild. Calling it infinite wealth just sounds like the infinite money glitch in The Sims. It's supposed to, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The whole the whole goof of uh, of Ichiban is like, he, he has all these like get rich quick schemes. Fascinating. The first game had like a crazy taxi simulator, <laughs> but you were just um, grabbing recycling from the street and fighting other bums for recycling on the street and trying sure. to get it to like, wow! You can when the villagers come, you can rub their bellies like Pokemon and make them happy. What These are wanna, real people. What if I don't want to play the rest of the game? You don't have to. There, I know people that played the first Yakuza and they were like, "Well, I guess this is a slot car racing game. I wow. guess this is a game about building remote control cars because I'm not doing anything that else." Fun too. Dude, the Yakuza games are crazy. They're crazy. Life Serial in the live studio audience said, these games are so much and uh, I, and it's amazing. I scrolled while I was there's a lot, there's a lot of adjust. game in these games. That pro recycling video game, yeah. There's a, there's a, there's a stock 
trading and business management sim in the last game where you have to go to like shareholder meetings and keep the shareholders happy. That's so funny. You can promote a chicken to manager of one of your of one a of chicken? your businesses. Yeah. And the chicken does really well in certain businesses. Whoa. It's just a chicken. And the chicken shows up at the stock at the at the shareholder meetings. Uh -huh. And it's just like I should hire a chicken to run Pixel Circus. You could, if it's a good chicken. All chickens are good chickens. I went to a petting zoo yesterday. Oh my God. I got to pet some really fancy chickens. How fancy? Very fancy. The kinds that have the little, at their feet. Do they? Did they have like the black feathers with the white? They were like all fluffy white. Mm -hmm. And they have the ones where there's like a lot of extra feathers around their feet. I love they look it. like little like boots with the fur. Oh, I love a fancy chicken. Fancy haired chickens. Um, and little goats. I have a um, I have a very lovely coffee table book that's just portraits of fancy chickens. That's great, Anthony. I love a fancy chicken. We should go to more petting zoos. See fancy chickens. Sure. Um, okay, so continuing down the, if we're talking about farm sims, uh, we have to talk about Moonlight Peaks. Uh, the demo for Moonlight Peaks launched today. So you have a little window to get this demo. Mm. It is absolutely adorable. It is so freaking cute. It is a vampire farming sim. I believe we talked about it when it got announced or when the first trailer dropped essentially. Mm -hmm. but, Sounds like us. Yeah, so you, uh, it's doing a little Halloween event for the demo right now. So you're just working on your little property area. It is a small section of the game. It lets you play seven uh, game days of foraging, farming, and decorating. You can take snapshots of what you do while you're in okay. there just to taste it, just a little try. So they say that it's um, it's very, you know, what you would expect from a farming sim from a, from a story of seasons or Animal Crossing but the main focus is on potions and spells. Yeah, so you have a little wand, you can cast spells to automatically water your crops and stuff like that. So as you get stronger as like a spell caster, your farming gets easier. You automate things through magic. I love that. It's so cute. I absolutely love it. You can see on here, somebody like, it pops up a little thing and you have to like follow the line of it to successfully cast the spell. That's good. Um, and you're a vampire, so your day begins at 4 p.m. and ends at 6 a.m. Finally, finally an Animal Crossing for you. Right? It's so cute. Um, I will say on PC Gamer, they said that there's not a lot that's very vampire-y about it other than the schedule, essentially, but it's a small Well, that's demo. a demo. It's you a know. little demo. Listen, you can't make a vampire Animal Crossing game without me draining the lifeblood from somebody. Right. That's just- that's you fly unavoidable. Around as a bat. Oh, it's so cute. The characters are adorable. I really love the art style. I think it's very cute. Uh, it doesn't have a release date. It's anticipated for sometime 2024, though. Okay. And then there was one in here that um, you put in here for for Sages while we're just in like Sage game territory. Yeah. That was uh, we didn't get to on Wednesday. Sure. Uh, Real quick. This is this is my other type of Sims I love. Yeah. Uh, somebody, a Skyrim fan has recreated the entire game in Age of Empires 2. Uh, it's the whole Skyrim. It's the whole map. And I love it. It There's looks so good. It's so great. I love it. This is the combination of literally two of my all-time favorite games. Like, two of the games that made me love games. Yeah. What a combo. It's nice to know it's not just me, you know? Yeah. Like, it's nice to know that somewhere out there, there is a demographic of people that love both of these games. And it makes sense. But I feel like Anthony makes fun of me for loving Ages of Empires. I don't make fun of you for loving it. You do make fun of me for loving I make Age fun of, of you. I make fun of you for no matter what comes out, no matter what game comes out, yeah. you are playing Age of Empires too. Yes. That's, the, it's not that you like Age of don't Empires. Don't you have a game that you always go back to? Like a default, like like your loading screen brain game? No. You don't have one? No, once I play a video game, I throw it out. I never think about it again. No, but I'm serious. No, uh, I've never done it. I'm gonna ask the BBs too. Do you have a game that's just like, if nothing in brain, this is game I play? If uh, need uh, nothing in brain, this is game I play? I've never, I've never played a game more than once. <laughs> I've never, I haven't even seen, I haven't even seen my family since I was seven years old. I packed a little bindle and I walked away. Yeah. Never thought about him again. Yeah, okay, here we go. Hades, Psychonauts, Slay the Spire. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Into the Breach. Yeah, Magic Gathering Arena. Minecraft. Minecraft is also one that I always go back to. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's just, it's my little comfort game. Yeah. That's all. I think no, that's great. But I don't, yeah, I, I absolutely do not, uh, do not make fun of you for enjoying Age of Empires. It's simply that Age of Empires is the default. Yeah. Uh, Should we get to the tier list? Is it time? Well, we have one more thing that we mentioned at the beginning, so I want to get to it uh, because this is a pretty big deal. Um, The Snake Eater Delta trailer came out, Metal Gear Delta. Mm -hmm. Um, They finally released the trailer. They said, hey, we're making Metal Gear Solid 3. We're doing it again, and it's on the Unreal Engine 5. It's got all the it's got all the bits and bobs that you need from an engine. And look at how beautiful it is. And they show off in the beginning of this thing, like a lot of the uh, a lot of the foliage and stuff, which mm-hmm. obviously is a big deal in in the Unreal Five engine. Uh, but then they, when they get to like the models and the movement and the camera angles and stuff, yeah, people are very like, huh? Oh. This is this is it, huh? Yeah. This that's is the what full. You did. This is the full remake. Now I think it looks gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, but. I can see where Metal Gear fans who have been waiting for the the full remake uh-huh. are looking at this and going, okay, you put the fancy rocks and trees in it, but uh, it looks like it, the models and everything, it just sort of looks like and plays like Metal Gear Solid 3. Yeah, the way that he passes through grass looked a little weird. There's just some stuff on here where I'm like, eh. Yeah. Uh, I... And such, I'm, I don't think of Metal Gear uh, a lot. I'm not somebody who's very into Metal Gear. Same. Uh, I genuinely, in my brain, got confused and thought that this was part of the Metal Gear collection. I thought this had already come out. <laughs> yeah. And then it was like, no, 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 those are, those are just upscales. Yeah. And then I remembered, I was like, right, this is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, and then I looked at it and I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't know, but like I said, I'm not a Metal Gear fan, so I'm not the person to to judge this. Right. Um, but uh, I don't know how. Yeah, right. I don't know if there are Metal Gear fans in there. What's up? How Let us know feel? what you think. Yeah, I think it looks fine. I think when when they're doing like these remakes, mm-hmm. it's very rare that it's a total from the ground up, like complete redone, yeah. hundred million dollar game. You right. know. Uh, to me, this looks Final like Fantasy Seven. Yeah, to me, this looks pretty good. Okay. Um, they did say that they're reusing all of the original voice clips and voice acting from three. You paying so those voice actors? Yeah, they you, you got you, you send David Hader a little check for that. You paying those voice actors for that, or what's they, up? They getting a check. Love using the original voice actors. No, that's great. That's great. You getting a check? They getting a check though. All right. Better be. Better be getting a check. Better be. Everybody's like, yeah, it looks like looks like a Metal Gear to me. <laughs> Sarah <laughs> said, I'm not a Metal Gear fan, but I'm ready to share a strong and inaccurate opinion. Same. That's this whole show. That's what we do. That's what we do, baby. <laughs> That's what we do, baby. See, Dan, do you know, is that a suspicion or a fact? I'd love to know. Yeah. All right. I think it's time, everybody. The show's going to run over today because we started very late. Did we? Yeah. Today I'm gonna acknowledge it. Did we? We were that late. I don't know. Um, it is officially time to begin the monster fucker tier list. It's the season, BBs. It's it the is, season of fucking monsters. It is Halloween, and I feel like for Halloween we have to go through. We started this a little bit on Wednesday as just a conversation. We decided no. We need a little structure to this. We need a little formality to this. We need a formal tier list. We need to do we need to do this yeah. in a way that it deserves because we think a lot about fucking monsters. In fact, we want to do this as a community effort too. So we not only made a tier list for ourselves, we also made a tier list that you can fill out at home. <gasps> so I'm going to drop it in the chat. I'm gonna drop it in the Discord. If you're watching later on YouTube, I'm gonna drop it in the description. Uh, so that you also, and please, please post your final tier list in the Discord, okay? I wanna see it, I wanna judge it. I wanna know you better by your monster fucking priorities. I wanna know what love is. I also want that, okay? I want you to show me. So, I'm posting it there. I'm dropping it in the Discord as we speak right now so you can play along with us, okay? I'm getting into full costume for this. You got to. I'm getting into full costume to fuck uh-huh. a monster. Can't fuck a monster if you're not in full costume. No, that would be rude. They've showed up in their full costume for you. Yeah. Okay. Apologies. 
allergies, I have the sniffles. So we're going to have to probably, Alex, for this, just go back and forth between mine and Anthony's screens as we both build our tier list. Oh, no, we're going to share a tier list. We're going to share? Yeah, this is, we're doing this, you and I are doing this together. Yeah? Yeah. We're doing this together. Okay. All right. Shared tier list. We're doing this together. Never mind. We will just be looking at my screen. So our categories are S, A, B, C, D, and F. Now, the typical tier list is just S through D there. Ha <laughs> yeah. ha. Um, but we added an F. I see a lot of them that add the F. It's fine. It's mostly for people who grew up in the American school system. Right. We don't like seeing we don't like seeing our grade our, our grades not finish. Uh huh. It's it's weird for our brains. Yeah. Also, I love some of these, an S grade. Also, some of these monsters below a D. Yeah. Okay. So, do we want to do these like in order of the pictures that we see here? Then yeah, let's just you do it in pull order. It up at least on yours. Let's so just do it in order. It's well. gonna be up here. Okay. The monster. Uh, we have the alien queen up first. Ooh, the alien queen from Alien Resurrection or from Aliens? Probably from Aliens. Aliens. Probably from Aliens. Yes. A oh. lot of arms. A lot of arms. Here's what I'm gonna say. That's a lot of arms. Hey, here's what I'm gonna say. What what all those mouths do. Right. What both those mouths do. So things can move once we place them because sometimes you get a little more context from somebody. Yeah. I'm leaning towards Alien Queen in like an a, not an really? S. Really? A or B? An A or B? Yeah. Do we not think you're that, that strong high? on the Alien Queen? What those mouths do? What those mouths do? What all those hands do? I worry about the, I worry about the acid. I worry about all the acid. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's acid saliva. It's acid blood. It's acid everything. Yeah. So what the what those mouths do really, if we think about it, is yeah. dissolve me. Honestly, dream. <laughs> I would put the alien queen more a B or a C. Okay, so let's say B for now. Okay, we'll put her in a B. Because if I'm saying she's A tier and you're saying she's C tier, yeah. we'll split the diff at a B right now. Okay. Um, up next is the Bride of Frankenstein. Bride of Frankenstein is is pure S tier monster. Absolutely S tier. Honestly, less to say about Bride of Frankenstein because it's just like, yeah, she's just a we all hot get it. lady. Yeah, the doctor was like, okay, I did it, but can I do it hot? And the answer was, yeah. yeah, you absolutely can. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Solid S tier. Um, up next is Chris. Manic pixie dead girl. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying? You know absolutely. what I'm saying. I know what you're saying. That's my dream. Yeah. <laughs> um, up next is the car, Christine. From Christine. Stephen King's Christine. <gasps> hmm. You wouldn't fuck a car. Now you wouldn't fuck a car, would you? Sure now, would. Now the first I think we've talked about this. The first Reddit I ever became a member of, yeah, and I'm still a member of to this day, is a Reddit called Dragons Fucking Cars. Because back in the day when I first heard about Reddit, people were like, it's Reddit, they got communities for everything. I was like, what do you mean for everything? everything? And they're like, yeah, here's one that's really funny, dude. It's Dragons Fucking Cars. I was like, what do you mean? And it's just fan art of Dragons Fucking Cars. And that led me down a whole thing where I started watching, there are like, you know, clips of people that use exhaust pipes and stuff. So... There are a lot of car fuckers out there. There are. Um, I don't know that I'm one of them. I, here's the thing. Yeah. Love a classic convertible. Yeah. Certainly. Sure. Love a love a love a cherry classic convertible. Like yeah. that's gorgeous. I we sent, can appreciate the beauty. I sent this tier list out to some people before we we started it here. Yeah. To friends of the show. Friend of the show, Carlos Luna said, "Soft leather seats." It's true. I don't know what that means. Let me tell you something. Engine purrs like a kitten. A lot of fluids. A normal amount, I guess, for a car. <laughs> for a car, sure. Yeah. Air conditioning. <laughs> how many, how many, how many people have you <laughs> fucked that are air conditioned? That's zero. That's zero. I'm going to give the car from Christine either a, like probably a D. A D? Yeah, probably a D. All right. I'm not that interested. Like, now here's where we're gonna get into a, a tough struggle of us sharing the tier list here. Yeah. Cause Creature's up next. Oh, Black Lagoon? Creature from Creature from the Black Lagoon. For me is S tier. I know that for the femmes especially, they love the creature. It's us, we love the creature. And here's what I'm gonna say. Like if you think about all the permutations of the creature legend. Uh huh including a shape of water. We're talking about a sensitive soul on a creature. We are talking about a sensitive soul on a creature. We're talking about a creature that um, understands plants uh -huh. and sea life. Yeah. 
and just wants to protect the environment. Wears a little rosy red lipstick. Yeah. Carry you in his arms. I'm gonna give, I mean, I'll I'll say the creatures, I'd, I'd give the creature an A or I'd give the creature an A. You want the creature an S? Put I the creature really in S. the creature an S. Put the creature we can, in we S. We can bump the creature down if we feel like somebody deserves it more. Okay. Now, obviously there can be multiple per tier. Uh, up next is classic Drac, Dracula. Bella Lugosi Dracula. Yeah. For me, low. For me, D. See, I think it's C. I think that's like a baseline monster. Like Not hot. I'm sorry, not, not hot. Not hot, but not not hot. Like There's a lot of very hot iterations of Dracula. And once we get, again, we get into the like, well, what iteration? Are we factoring mm -hmm. them all together? Are we factoring this specific Yeah, is it one? just the idea of Dracula? Because if it's the idea of Dracula, that's an S. Idea of Dracula, S tier. Dracula from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, S tier. Mm -hmm. This Dracula that we're looking at right now. Uh, Jewish. A C. Jewish. Sure. That's nice, that's a plus. The Legend of Dracula, deeply anti-Semitic. Yeah, but that Dracula? <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it maybe then a problem to cast Dracula as a Jew? No, we took it back, baby. Did we? <laughs> Did we? <laughs> Did we? I think vampires- Oh yeah, you think we drink the blood of Christians? <laughs> I, th I think <laughs> vampires, <laughs> I think vampires now in, uh -huh. are so far removed from the original anti-Semitic intent Mostly. And I think- and oh, I But think the original Dracula is not. And I think particularly the Bela Lugosi Dracula- Yeah. <laughs> definitely is, has okay. nothing to do with that. I give that Dracula a, just a straight up C. I'm cool with the C. We have nothing in the C tier right that's now. Just, that's just a, that's a dude. Up next, Frankenstein's <laughs> monster. And this is gonna be, once again, the Boris Karloff. Yeah. Universal Studios, 1950s. Which love, gentle, I think it's a C too. A C? I think I think no. that Frankenstein's a C. I think that's I want to say a B at least. Yeah. I want to say a B at least for Frankenstein's. Okay. Monster. I I think you know if we were a broad shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A broad shoulder and a gentle lover. I'll say he's yeah he's better than a he's better than a Universal Dracula. So yeah. yeah. Okay, we can give him a B. Um, up next we have Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger I think is a selfish lover. Uh, I agree. Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street, one of my favorite horror movies of all time, mm -hmm. one of my favorite franchises of all time. So it's hard because I love Freddy. Yeah. I am repulsed by the idea of having sex with Freddy Krueger. Well, he, he, he seems like the kind of dude who, if he thought of a joke during sex, he wouldn't be able to stop himself from saying it. Yeah, and there's the blades. And there's the blades. That are in very inconvenient places. Sure. Now they are gloves, but I don't think he's taking them off. But it's just one. Other it's one's his dominant hand. We assume because it's his murder in hand. Yeah, you're not gonna murder with your non-dominant hand. But maybe, hand. but maybe he murders with his non-dominant hand so he can sign checks. You think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like you think you maybe got, Freddy Krueger's ambidextrous? Well, I think maybe, you know. I think everybody who's left-handed is a little ambidextrous. Yeah. So like maybe he's ambidextrous enough to murder with his That's, right hand. Yeah. And then and then he can just do important stuff. I don't think stuff. so. I think murder comes first. Because imagine like you reach with your dominant hand. Yeah. To open a door. Uh huh. And you just bl blades. You know what I mean? Like I think I think that's a very specific. That's a hand for a specific. But also, he wears a fucking fedora. We gotta go there too. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. Like, I hate the fedora more than the blades on one of his hands. Yeah, it's like, oh, okay, well you had a nice sweater on and you ruined it by pairing it with a fedora. Yeah, and it's like, it's not even, dude, it's like a ratty old fedora. Ratty. Like you didn't even get like a cool fedora. A lot of people are talking about Edward Scissorhands. Uh, Edward Scissorhands does not count for this list because that is not a horror movie, mm -hmm. but would. Smash. Yeah, and also, Edward Scissorhands is not a monster, he's a sweet boy. Yeah, smash. Uh, uh, I'm saying Freddy goes in F. Freddy's our first F? F for fedora. <laughs> I think he would just be like, I think I think he's down in D or F because he would be a rude self-absorbed date. Yeah. He says rude shit. I already have nightmares. No, thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. I think I think he's gotta be below the car. You know? Yeah. The I car, but the, the the car isn't gonna talk to you the way that Freddy does. Good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Thank goodness. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh up next. This one's easy for me. Ghostface. Now, here's the thing, Sage. Uh-huh. It's Ghostface. Yeah. We don't know that it's Billy Loomis in there. We don't. But 
I think this is first movie Ghostface. So you've but got a you, 50 50 but chance. You, yeah, but you think that because you want it to be Billy Loomis. Yes. <laughs> I do. But we decided on a specific Dracula. We decided on a specific Frankenstein's That's monster. That's true. So because there isn't one. Now, here's what I will say as a, a pretty big scream aficionado. Mm hmm. From the context clues of that movie, we get that it's Billy Loomis probably like 85, 90% of the time. Yeah. And that Lillard only fills in maybe 10, 15 when Billy has to be somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he needs to prove that it's not they, him. They, they mastermind it together, but Billy's, uh -huh. Billy's the only one that's Billy's, got the guts to go through with it. Billy's it. Yeah. So given that it's Skeet Ulrich, given- <laughs> Jughead's dad? <laughs> uh, even not given that, mask stays on. <laughs> sure. Let's say- S tier. Let's say that you show up and you don't know which ghost face it is. Uh -huh. You're not going to know. Yeah, S tier. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely S tier. What is it, okay, but what when you really think about ghost face, uh -huh. what is it about ghost face the 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 monster the murderer the way Ghostface acts as Ghostface that makes you want to to sleep Replay with Ghostface. Replay the scene mm -hmm. in the opening of the first movie with Drew Barrymore, right? Where they're on the phone and mm -hmm. she's making popcorn. What's your name? Right, well, right. Why do you want to know my Smash. name? Smash. Because I want to know who I'm looking at. Smash. <laughs> Smash. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> A hundred percent. Do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> Why do you want to be my boyfriend? Uh, Come on. Uh, come on. You want to put him in S? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I absolutely want to put him in S. That's an S for me. All right. All right. All right. I think, I think A is more reasonable, but you can have an S. You can have an S. Fucking Billy Loomis, dog. <laughs> we don't know that. Mm. We know it in my heart. It could I be, do have two it, it more could be Shaggy Rogers. We do have two more that I absolutely know are S tier. So we might end up bumping some people down. We'll see. I think we're going to. I think our S tier is too, we're, we're, we're letting too many people I'm in. I'm feeling great about our S tier. We're letting right too many now. people into the S tier. Um, the next one is Jason Voorhees. Now, Ooh. now, Friday the 13th. We're canonizing that it's probably the first movie, right? Are we? That's okay. So here's the thing I think. For some of these ones, yeah. I mean, when you look at that Dracula, you know it's Bella Lugosi. Right, and it's hard because like Freddy is always the same. That's Freddy. always Robert England. But I want, and I mean, technically, it's always it's always Kane Hodder. But we're not talking about the person that's not no, always, it's not. but mostly. But here's it's the thing: not mostly. It's mostly if you if you're talking about the first movie. Yeah, it's his mom. Well, that's but that's what I mean, like. We're not talking, when we talk about it's Robert England, when we talk about it's Bella Lugosi, yeah. we're not talking about the fact that it's them. Yeah. We're talking about the, that that's a standard monster. Yeah, yeah. I don't care that it's, that it's usually played by Kane Hodder. Uh -huh. What I care about is this is Jason and we yeah. don't know which Jason we're walking up to. The same thing as Ghostface, you yeah. don't know what you're gonna get. This is, we, it could be Space Jason, we don't could know. Could be Jason or Jason's mom most that's realistically. Right. I'm gonna say your odds are it's Jason or Jason's mom. I think, the odds are, based on the number of films, mm -hmm. the odds are it is a reanimated Jason Voorhees. Interesting. Because it was only Jason's mom a little bit. The, across, most of the first ten, movie. across 10 movies, it was Once only it Jason's movies, mom. Yes. So I think like- You're factoring all the movies, but we didn't factor all the movies for Ghostface. I thought we should. You didn't want to because of Billy Loomis. Yeah, I wanted a better chance of getting Billy Loomis. But that's the thing. Now I want a better chance of getting Jason's mom. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing about Jason. Tell me. He doesn't like sex. Mm -hmm. That's one of his main things. Yeah. One of his main things is if people be fucking, Jason gets mad. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So like, d is that part of the allure for you? Uh -huh. Do you want to know what it's like to fuck somebody who hates <laughs> sex? Because no. I have a feeling it's not great. No, I don't want that at all. I do want to shout out Alex's comment in here for saying, I feel like for these mo masked monsters, you got to keep the costume on when you think about doing it. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> you have to. We are, you are not doing it with Billy Loomis. You can think it's Billy Loomis as much as you want, and I'm going to yeah. let you have that. Thank you. But you don't know. You don't know. No, and I'm fine with that. I still rank Ghostface just as high 
with that factored in. Okay. So we're factoring it in for Jason too. What do you think that puts Jason at? I think Jason's an F, dude. Jason's a- I agree. Jason's an incel. Yeah. Jason's such You're an incel. You're so right. Jason's like, are, are other people fucking and I'm not fucking? Yeah. Get out of here, dude. Yeah. You're gross. Jason Voorhees, F tier. Up next, Jekyll and Hyde. That's at least a D, but probably an F. I'd say D or F as well. Because I think Jekyll, we, we talked about this a little bit. Yeah. I don't think Jekyll can fuck. He's too repressed. He's probably uh -huh. not great at it. Yeah. And he's also like, he's repressed in that Sam Raimi, Peter Parker, Tobey Maguire way. Yeah. Where you're like, that's not cute. Yeah. And Hyde, you don't want to go on a date with Hyde. You don't want to, you don't want to, yeah. maybe you want to have sex with Hyde. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like Hyde's, Hyde doesn't respect boundaries. I like knowing what I'm going to get. Mm -hmm. And, um, like if somebody is going to be more unpredictable and mentally ill than expected in the relationship, it should be me. Yeah. Hyde, Hyde I feel like is one of those people that's like, oh, do you, oh, you don't, you don't, you don't like that? I feel like, I, I don't remember you saying ew, that. Ew, and it's ew, like, ew, no, I ew, said ew, it. -tier, no, I said it. F tier, F tier, F tier. You know what I mean? Ica. Hyde does not respect boundaries. Disgusting. <laughs> Up next. <laughs> Up next are the killer clowns from outer space. <laughs> Non-specific, maybe all of them at once. Maybe, maybe it's one of them. I would say you'd get to choose hypothetically, but we're factoring them as like a cluster. Aren't you tired of picking clowns? <laughs> you would think. <laughs> I love clowns. Yeah. I really do. You really do. Now, are the killer clowns particularly disgusting clowns? Sure. Yeah, that's kind of their thing. But are they particularly great at being clowns? Yeah. That's the thing. And let's look, I love people that are passionate and talented. Yeah. I love people that are really good at what they do and know what they do best. If you're into light bondage, there's no lighter bondage than cotton candy. <laughs> They got that gun that puts people in the cotton candy cocoons. Like it's no S tier for sure. Yeah. I'm going to say a B or a C. I'm going to say a C. You're going to put it, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would go for a B or a C. I would say a C is fair for the killer clowns. A C's because fair. Because we're clustering them all together and some are more fuckable clowns than others. That's what everybody on dating apps says. Yeah. My Twitter bio is literally a bit of a little clown. Yeah. You I love, love a clown. You love a clown. I love clowns. Okay. So like, see? All right. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. I feel good about that. Okay, up next is <laughs> Michael John, Myers. John G. Man's five in the, in the studio audience says BCSM. <laughs> uh, Michael Myers. I think you run into similar problems that you run into with Jason Voorhees with yeah. Michael Myers. I just want to shout out somebody that just came into the chat um, and tell you that you suck. <laughs> uh, somebody came in and said, a whole stream of stage talking about sex in a cheerleader outfit. You've came to the wrong show. I yeah. hate you. Yeah. Do you know that I hate you? I want you to know it in your heart so that you can't enjoy anything about this, that I don't like you. <laughs> Bye. Uh, Michael Myers. I think you have Jason Voorhees problems with Michael Myers. I agree. I think there's nothing, there's there's nothing fuckable about Michael Myers. Everybody's like LMAO Sage. It's 10 a.m. I don't have the patience to be polite about it. Don't no. be gross at me. It's my show. Uh, <laughs> so I think, but I think there's something. Hear me out. I'm hearing you out. There's something less off-putting about Michael Myers than Jason Voorhees. Um, not really for me. Not really? I mean, look, there is the factor of like the very specific thing about Jason being kind of an incel. But Michael Myers, I don't know. I don't really, I don't really like a quiet type. <laughs> not really for me. Like yeah. there's just, there's absolutely nothing appealing about him is the yeah. problem. There's not any specific thing like there is for Jason, but there's literally nothing. He's got a quiet- He's giving me nothing. He's got a quiet passion. You can yeah. say that. You can say that. Very just, passionate about the, about when he sets a goal, you know what I mean? Yeah. When he sets a goal, he goes for it. Yeah. You can't deny that. It's just like Slay Queen, give us absolutely nothing. You I know? Give, probably like a D. 
Give us absolutely nothing, Queen. I think he's a D. I don't think he's as bad as like. I'll put him in D for you, but it would be an F for me. All right. Personally. Up next. Nosferatu. Das Vampire? Yeah. Uh, now, hear me out. I'm gonna hear you out. Maybe more than Dracula. Well, he's got he's got more draw and power than Dracula. Yeah. The the original Nosferatu has more draw and power than Dracula, for sure. Yeah. Like, I think Nosferatu, uh, like, okay, here's the thing. Total monster. Because mm -hmm. we get into this where it's like, okay, we're not just gonna prioritize the ones that are the most human looking. You know what I mean? No. Total monster. This is a monster fucking tier list. He has these. I like it. I yeah. Like it. I like it. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Bella Lugosi does these too. Yeah. But Nosferatu like really does them. For my uh, youngins in the chat, picture the one from SpongeBob. Mm-hmm. Yeah. However, the second time, not 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 the second time, the first time from SpongeBob, because I don't want to make it weird because Alex Ward is the second Nosferatu in SpongeBob. So first Nosferatu in SpongeBob hey. is actual Nosferatu. Hey, what about the hash slinger? Where's the hash slinger go on your tier Where's list? Where's the hash slinging slasher in this tier list? <laughs> Very low. Very low. Very low. Uh, I think Nosferatu probably for me, yeah, he would either be a C or a B. I'd either put him right with Lugosi or a little above. I'm going B. Yeah? Go I ahead. Throw B. it in B. I think B. I think solid B tier. Okay. Up next, the nurse from Silent Hill. <sighs> for those who are listening on the podcast later, I'm doing a little hand fan because the nurse from Silent Hill. Now the nurse from Silent Hill is hot. Hot. And the the way they the way they move in the twitchy and then they undulate and hot. Like, it's hot. I do think about it being a literal manifestation of Harry's problems with women. <laughs> sure. I'm not really thinking about that. Okay. I am distracted by the hot nurse costume. By boobs. By hot nurse boobs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm distracted by gay feelings. So, yeah. um they're pretty hot. <laughs> really hot. They're pretty hot. Really hot. And they're hot. literally they're literally made of they're literally made of repressed sexual energy. Yeah, they're they're full fantasy. Um I could, there's not there's nothing about this that I'm not about that I'm not into. I think we could I think we could I think we could put it in an A. Uh Miss Reaper said finally more women. Yeah, there's not a lot of femme monsters. No. There's not. A lot of them, because of the way that we like want to portray women in media, is like the women that we think of in like horror movies are too human. Yeah. You know, like they're just hot ladies. Yeah. And usually like, and usually the thing about them, like when I think about uh, like something like a species or an under the skin or something, yeah. like the whole, or even a Jennifer's body is it's just like, no, no, no. The thing is like, they're hot. But they'll get you. Yeah, and like it's the just like kind and of the thing. fact and the fact that they're hot is why they'll get you. And right. it's like, mm, mm, mm. mm. Uh, so S tier. S tier. I was gonna say A tier. A? <laughs> I think maybe the hottest on this list. The hottest on this list. You every time you like one, you go straight to S. No. <laughs> no. You're going straight to S. I think she's hotter than Bride of Frankenstein. Then Bride of Frankenstein's an A, clearly, because you just said it. I mean. You just said it, you just I ranked them. I don't know, I don't know. You just know. ranked them. You think A for, I mean, this is our list though. I think I think Bride of Frankenstein is hotter than the nurse from Okay, Silent then we'll Hill. put the nurse for Silent Hill in an A, because I've gotten my way a lot here, all right? We got two back to back here. Here we go, we've got, Two Pennywise the Clowns. We decided to put both in. Now, are there a million versions of pretty much all of these monsters that we've talked about? Yes. But is one of them Tim Curry in most of those monsters? No. So you have Skarsgård Pennywise yeah. and Tim Curry Pennywise. Now, removing the actors, we're you also- You have to remove the actors. We're also talking about the way those characters are played and mm -hmm. portrayed. And mm -hmm. here's what I'm gonna tell you. Tim Curry, Never played a character that didn't want to get it and yeah. didn't want you to know that he wanted you to get it too. That's how Tim Curry plays every character. You could play Command and Conquer, mm -hmm. where Tim Curry is the head of the Russian Empire. Yeah. And you'll just be like, oh, he's gonna take a, a rocket to the moon yeah. and he kind of wants me to come with him, right? Yeah. 
Like he won't like Yeah. Like Tim Curry so, just has sexual energy. Okay. So that's your your pitch for Tim Curry Pennywise. I think Tim Curry Pennywise is an A. I think Skarsgard Pennywise is a C or a D. Wow. Okay. So I'm gonna advocate for Skarsgard Pennywise here. Um, I think the makeup's an improvement. Yeah. Uh, I think the outfit is an improvement. Sure. I think that um, and I hate to say this, but like that's my preferred Pennywise uh -huh. as a huge Tim Curry fan. Oh no, no, no. Listen. Scar Scar's Pennywise is a much better like that's Pennywise. Pennywise to me. T Tim Curry Pennywise, that's a Pennywise that's down to actually have a little fun. I don't know. I think that there's a playfulness to uh, Scar Scar's Pennywise, and I, I think I prefer. I think Scar Scar's Pennywise is smooth down there like a Ken doll. You think? I do. I almost prefer that. <laughs> How we. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that almost made me feel a little more comfortable, I think, actually. Um, I don't know, man. I just think even looking at the two photos we've got here in the tier list, Tim Curry's Pennywise looks bummed. Mm -hmm. He has a very like serious face to him. Scars guard Pennywise always got a smile. Tim, Tim Curry's Pennywise keeps turning into ladies and trying to smooch John Ritter and then saying, <laughs> why don't you kiss me, Billy boy? <laughs> I don't know if that's a positive right I think yet. it's good. I think it shows, I think it shows that he wants it. Whereas like, I think, I think Skarsgård uh, literally would just be like, and we'll have a sex. And then he like brings <laughs> you, and then he brings you into the room and he just decapitates you and there is no sex. You think? Yeah. Okay, I cannot deny Tim Curry's sexual energy. <laughs> no one can. No one can. No one can. Okay, so Tim Curry goes in A. Yeah. I'm gonna say Pennywise, uh, Skarsgård Pennywise B. Okay, I'll I think let you they're, have a they're B. closer. I'll let you have a B. I don't think there's a whole tier between them. Yeah, I Though, think that's fine. Yeah. Mm, I think it's fine. Like, I think Skarsgård Pennywise is hotter. Sure. But personality. Sure, physically he's hotter. Maybe a C. Maybe but, a C. But we're talking about we're talking about fuckable. Yeah. Okay. We're moving on to Cenobites. Oh, S tier. Really? You know I like a goth. <laughs> 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 we're talking a goth that wants a goth that wants to play logic puzzles. Hellraiser, everybody. Oh my goodness. I'm not against it. S tier. Interesting. S tier. Cenobites are S tier. I mean, it's a good fit. Like the outfit, yeah, hundred out of ten. Uh huh. Yeah, and like they're and vinyl. they're and they're playful. They got a playful vibe. Yeah, and then there was the uh, new hot lady Cenobite. There's a Cenobite for everyone. The one in the like the new Hellraiser. Yeah, laser. there's a Cenobite for any for everyone. All I think, right, I think Cenobite's I'm S tier. I'm gonna go with you on S tier for that. I'm gonna put them up in the S tier. Yeah, I agree that there's one for everyone. Yeah, they're all like listen, Cenobites are about it. Kissing would be tough. Kissing would be tough. All the the needles and stuff. Yeah, all because of the needles. You know, like because of the pins. Because of the, the pins, pins in the head. <gasps> Wait a minute, is that why? I just realized. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Pyramid head. S. S. <laughs> Absolutely S tier. So I had been saving a spot in the S tier for Pyramid Head because oh my God, Pyramid Head. Pyramid Head. Pyramid Head. Because here's the here's the thing about Pyramid Head. Whoa. <laughs> Obviously, Pyramid Head has the same energy as when they like when they show the behind the scenes of a Marvel movie and you see an actor that you've only known for like dramatic roles pulling a tire across a field. Yeah. And you're like, I didn't know they could do that. Whoa. And Pyramid Head's just dragging that giant sword yeah. and just like ripped as hell. Yeah. Like- uh, I'm also picturing Dead by Daylight, a little bit of side butt. Yep. Yep. Just showing a touch of side butt. It's also- And I respect that so much. It's also impossible for me to remove Pyramid Head from all the Pyramid Head cosplayers. Oh yeah. There are a lot of like, like Great. hot, hot I, femme pyramid head cosplay. I feel the same way about the nurse too. Yeah. I feel like with both of those characters, it's just like, come on. They're entwined. Yeah, uh, it's really great. I love uh, when a man makes a slutty little choice, mm -hmm. like a little side butt. Uh, Critter Jason is saying big sword compensating. No, it's like, I think it's, I think it's the same reason why, uh, why so many people like the, uh, the lumberjack TikTok. Uh-huh. Because it's not compensating. No. He uses it for work. Yeah. 
You know that he actually uses it he has for a work. Trade. Yeah. Uh, also, shout out to Alex for the excellent like slideshow of mm -hmm. characters we've been getting. No, it's good. Brilliant, phenomenal. Thank you. Um, the shoulders, everything about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everything about Pyramid Head is an S tier and is immediately going into the S tier. Mm -hmm. It's a good list so far. I think so. And relatively well balanced. I mean, considering it's us, yes. Look, it's Con monster fuckers. Yeah. A lot of S tier because we, we like monsters. We do be monster fuckers. Uh, up next. <laughs> up next is the Babadook. Gay icon, the Babadook? Now, instantly gets points for being a gay icon. Yes. Cares about family. Cares about one family a lot. A lot, for sure. A, like a lot. Mm hmm Definitely devoted. I think, I think would definitely be a, um, would definitely, would definitely be a very reciprocal lover, the Ooh, Babadook. Yeah, I could see that. You know? Now, there are like the different iterations of the Babadook. Mostly we picture the like sketch, the little drawing of the Babadook. Yeah. But there is the physical guy. There is a guy who's the Babadook. Yeah, which There's is just also, that like painted on the Alex, if you could find the tweet from, uh, or, or the post from, God, what is her name? She's a, she's a screenwriter, but she went to the Halloween party where no one was dressed up and she was the Babadook. Mm. Do you remember that tweet? Yeah, it was really funny. <laughs> that um, was the, that was the writer of Ghostbusters 2016. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good. The Babadook as, <laughs> there it is. Throwback to Halloween when I dressed up as the Babadook, but my, um, oh wait, what did it say? I missed the rest of the tweet. But but my friend's house had- Had oh. grownups drinking wine vibe. Yeah. God, that's so funny. <laughs> uh, P Cells says, Babadook chews mouth open. Ooh, rough. Babadook does chew mouth open. Can you get us a picture of the Babadook, um, like actual character? Yeah, yeah, there it is. I am a little into it. It's got, well, cause the thing about it is it's got like dark carnival vibes. You know I love a carny. You love a carny, you love a clown. <laughs> Your taste is impeccable. Uh-huh. And we have nothing further to say about it. Uh, I think the Babadook for me is like a B. I, I think I'm comfortable with a B tier. I'd say a B or a C. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Um, up next, this just gets funnier every time. We have the fly. Okay, here's the thing about the fly. Once you it's know, the fly, it's not Jeff Goldblum. You know how the fly is gonna end up. Uh huh. But, but, there's a Gina Davis to this whole thing. Yeah? Where what, what part of the fly process are you getting in there for? Are you taking the Gina Davis space mm -hmm. where you are there uh -huh. for sweet Jeff Goldblum scientist has his own espresso machine, is very proud of it. Wants to wants to help the world, uh -huh. or are you there for the end when it's like, hold on, let me throw up on this donut so I can eat it? Can I be honest with you? Yeah, I feel like the internet's going to be really mad at me for this. I don't really like Jeff Goldblum. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's fine. It's more about do you like the sweet scientist guy? But like because of it, it's not like oh, I deal with the fly for Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. You can't yeah. you can't see Seth Brun Seth Brundle. You can only see the fly. It's just like, eh. Or you can only see Jeff Goldblum. Is what I mean. Yeah, neither side's super appealing to me. Yeah, I'm incredibly demisexual. Now, if you like if, incredibly demisexual, which means if you have like a a bad personality, it ruins it, and I cannot see you as attractive. Sure, Alex, can you bring up that photo that you just had up again? Because I'm going to tell you this: the fly got kind mm -hmm. eyes. Can we, do, can we take a look at that, of that transformed fly again? Because the fly do have kind eyes. Look, he's got, he's got, he's smizing. He's smizing at you. I, and he's got a PhD, he's got a job, he cares. Not anymore. What do you mean not anymore? That's, if they won't let the fly work his job at the university, that's prejudiced. I don't <laughs> think that that fly has a job or a PhD. The fly definitely had a PhD. Jeff Goldblum had a PhD. Seth Brundle, who is the fly, has a PhD. I think once he became a fly, he was a new person. Emerged anew. You're just gonna throw away eight years of college? <laughs> 
It's extenuating 12? circumstances. I don't know. Ooh, that in between is rough. The in between is rough. I think the in between is the roughest. Um, D, F. All right, I'll throw it in D. All I'll right. throw it in D. I think it should be a little bit higher because he cares, but that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. Apparently, a heart of gold doesn't matter to you. Nope. Wow. Jeff Goldblum made some really questionable comments on Drag Race. It's not Jeff Goldblum. We've been saying the whole time it can't be the actor. I know. I know. But it made him so. I know you don't like the whole uh, oh, oh, no. yeah, of Jeff Goldblum. I really don't like, you don't like it. That, oh, well, I mean, yeah. and his characters play like that too. Yeah, you oh. know it just doesn't do it for me. Yeah, we have the mummy. We have Imhotep. How far mummied is Imhotep in this question? Everybody in the mummy can get it. Everybody in the mummy can get it. The thing is, he kind of comes in and out of it. Well, so here's the thing. He's not permanently in one direction. No, he comes back very human, mm -hmm. uh, or he gets to the peak of very, of very human, looking mm -hmm. like uh, looking like Arnold Vosloo, being just a, a, a bronze king, or a bronzer king, because they didn't actually hire anybody appropriate. Nope. But um, what about, I'll say this, what about the point where he's mostly looking like flowy robes, let's just have a party, chill in the desert. But he's got that hole that he eats bugs through in the side of his cheek. Could still get it. Still get it? Smash. Um, the cat scares him, and now his skin is all blistery and weird. Not my favorite. But if I, are we only getting that point, or are we saying we're taking it all? It's, I think, I think it could, I think we're taking it all. I think, yeah, due to the out of bedroom things that are happening with Rick McConnell mm -hmm. and, and Evie yeah. uh, at the time, you could be in the middle of mummy fucking mm -hmm. and it could go from beetle hole to full mummy <laughs> at any moment. I'm still kind of down. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I'm not S tier down, but I'm like, Here's I'm what gonna we, be honest, I was gonna say A tier. Yeah? I mean, here's what we know about Imhotep. Uh-huh. When he's into somebody, he's into somebody. Like, like if thousands Imhotep, of years will do anything to bring you back from the dead. Yeah. And they were, and like, let's and take a look. commitment. Yeah, let's take a look at like, and what he, they were acting like and how they, and like how they were dressing with each other in the bedroom and stuff. And like, these are some freaks. I'm even And looking, they care. I'm even looking at him in full like, zombie-ish. Yeah. Still kind of shaped like the actor. We could get A tier. We could get an A. We can get an A tier for, for Imhotep. Yeah. I'm gonna say A tier. The commitment, his love for her. Yeah. It you, matters. Yeah. You can tell, you can tell that they they vibe. When he's when he's sleep when he's sleeping with somebody, he's vibing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's important. Up next we have the pale man. D. Wow, that was a quick answer. Yeah. What do they call the medical procedures where they stick a camera in you? Uh, that's that's anything. It depends on what part they're sticking a camera in. <laughs> I'm just saying any of that. It's too much of a medical exam for me. Eyes on the hand. Yeah, no. <laughs> like that. Actually, yeah, wherever he's touching, he's also looking and like, I don't need that. D. 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 A lot of people would put that in F tier. For some reason, not us. Not us. <laughs> I guess we found something redeemable about it. You agree with us, Alex? Yeah? I love this character. Yeah. Yeah? All right. We're not right. here to yuck anybody's yum. We have the werewolf from An American Werewolf in London. Low for me. Like, D. Yeah. That's a werewolf where if he, if, there are some werewolves. Uh-huh. Because we could have chosen any werewolf. We could have. There are some werewolves where you can be like, well, maybe when they're like, maybe they're like kind of intense Oz. and they're kind of nice. Yeah. Uh, we could have had Oz and from Buffy. Yeah. And then during full moon, hey, just lock them up. That's not when you want to. Or, but there's something where like, particularly when it's getting close to full moon, depending on the, you know, but I think if you are, 
I think if you're sleeping with a werewolf from American Werewolf in London, you are gonna wake up ribbons. I am team that's not a hot werewolf. I think there are hot werewolves. We that, also could have gone Twilight werewolves. Yeah, that werewolf just sees you as food. Yeah. There's nothing There's nothing sexual about that werewolf. F tier? F tier. F tier. There's nothing sexual about that particular werewolf. And last, but certainly not least, uh, Tim Curry's second appearance on this list. We have the devil from legend. Actual literal Satan Tim Curry. S tier. S tier. S tier. S tier. That whole that whole character is is played as the seductive devil. Yeah. That whole character is like, oh hey. It's uh-huh. just oh, what's up? Yeah. It's just me the devil. And I just like, hey Mia Sarah, like, why don't you just like come over to my castle? It'll be cool. Pretty much every depiction of the devil is hot. Mm-hmm. And I stand by that. Okay. Um, but especially, especially Tim Curry. I mean, every Tim Curry character can kind of get it. Sure. And that's what I'm saying. They all have that energy. It's just, it's just the energy. It's just the vibe. Mm-hmm. It's just the vibe that it'd be a good time. Yeah. That's and it. also very hot. All of his characters have that vibe. Look like at also, that. God damn. Literally. Look at that. That's just a tall ripped Tim Curry. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you watched Legend? Oh, it's been so long. Yeah, because you because your your surprise at that when it popped up was palpable. Well, I just looked at these photos yesterday. Yeah. So it doesn't have anything to do with it being a while. It's just like, wow, every time. Every time. Uh, let's take a look at our final tier list here and see if there's anything we want to change. Okay. So in the S tier, we have the Bride of Frankenstein. We have Creature. We have Ghostface. We have Pinhead. We have Pyramid Head. And Tim Curry is Satan. Couple of those gotta move. There really? Can't be, yeah, there can't be that many S's. Oh, that's I just, so disagree. I think this is a perfect S tier. That's just not how the that's not how the grade curve works. <gasps> really? There can't be that many exceptionals. It's a monster fucker tier list. That's fine. Okay, so who do we have in A? We have the nurse. Mm-hmm. We have Pennywise uh, classic, and we have the mummy. Okay, I think those are good. Yeah, I think somebody from S could move down to A. Who? You know who I'm gonna say, but it doesn't matter. Is it Ghostface? Yeah, you know it's Ghostface. Why? Ghostface has more sexual energy. Ghostface is, I mean, listen, if you want to, if you want to like really reduce it down, even if it's your favorite ghost face, even uh-huh. if it's the one that you really hope for, it's just some self-absorbed teen dork. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Billy Loomis was probably my first actual crush. I know, I know that. So, but I could also, I could also move, I could also be okay with moving. Creature or Pinhead down to A. I will move Creature to A. Okay. I disagree with it deeply. Of the universal monsters, absolutely number one for me. Yeah. But I'll do it because this is our like median list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. B. B. We have Alien Queen. We have Frankenstein's monster. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Nosferatu and the Babadook. Babadook could be a C. I think the Babadook could be a C as well. I think the Babadook is probably a C. Yeah. When you hear all of those others, you're like, ah, oh, Babadook's not on that level. Yeah, Babadook, Babadook could never. <laughs> well, moving into C then, we have Dracula. Mm-hmm. We have Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yeah. We have Pennywise, Skarsgård Edition. And now we have the Babadook. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. D, we have Christine the car. We have mm-hmm. Michael Myers. We have the fly. And yeah. we have the pale man. I feel good about that. I feel good about that. Um, I Yeah, from that, I'm like, I think the pale man's a little above the other three, but. Yeah, sure. Okay. But not to the point of being a C. No. Sorry, Alex. And in our F tier, we have Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Jekyll and Hyde, and the werewolf. I think that's great. That's a great list. I think we nailed it. Listen. Uh, if you want to uh, make your own list, yeah. or you have any of opinions about our list, uh-huh. certainly take them to the Discord. Please do. Uh, we're gonna put that tier list. Uh, there's a link in the Discord. We put a link in chat earlier. I'm sure we'll put it in there again. Yeah. Uh, we want everybody to do their tier list. Let's compare and contrast. I'm downloading it. I'm gonna post ours in the Discord for reference. Mm-hmm. Your tier list one download. You can always take a screenshot of it as well. It's always you could always well. uh, you could always do a chalk rubbing of your computer monitor. Yeah. Uh, hey everyone. What up? What time thanks, is it? Thanks oh my for God, joining it's so us. Late. Yeah, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh-huh. Uh, we're here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We at, sure are. Uh, at nine a.m. 
And uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, and we would love it if you joined us. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's the most important thing you can do to support us is to follow here, uh, watch the show. It'd be great if you shared the show with friends. Let them know that this is a good thing to watch. Yeah, uh, we really about it. Yeah, we really appreciate that. Uh, if you want to like get really down to business, though, give us money. Hey, you can do so at patreon.com slash pixel circus. You can go, uh, you can donate directly during the show. Uh, there's limited fees and you just improve this little bar back here. Mm -hmm. You can subscribe to the channel. There's all kinds of things that you can do and uh, we appreciate it very much. We're an That's independent right. channel and that keeps the lights on. Mm -hmm. So very cool of you. Uh, remember that if you're a patron today, you get a little extra bonus clip from us. So stick around for that. Uh, Otherwise, Sage, where can people find you? You can find me on the internet everywhere at NotSage or twitch.tv slash NotSage. We're doing Halloween activities, uh, including Saturday little nostalgia games. Love that. How about you? Uh, you can find me everywhere online at A Carboni, except for here on Twitch where I'm at Anthony Carboni. Uh, and of course, it's Alan Wake 2 day, so uh, I will be streaming a lot of Alan Wake today. I've been waiting 13 years. Come play Alan Wake with me. I'm going to lose my ding dang mind. Uh, Alex, how about you? You can find me online at elder underscore Mancy. I'm also doing a charity stream uh, on the 30th at 5 p.m. EST, I think it is, on twitch.tv slash Jess the Human. And you can find me tomorrow doing my queer horror D&D campaign Strange Hungers on twitch.tv slash Total Party Kiss. Mm -hmm.